Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Boeing 737 MAX planes have been grounded across the world this week. Rebecca Campbell joins me to discuss the repercussions of this. Hi Rebecca. What led to the grounding of the aircraft? Well, it was of course the uh, fatal uh, disaster involving Ethiopian Airlines flight um, a few days ago which killed, if my memory serves me correctly, 157 people, which followed only five months after a Lion Air crash in Indonesia, both crashes involving 737 MAX 8 models. Uh, the Lion Air crash also killing everybody aboard, taking the total death toll to uh, around, I think, 346. It's very, very, very unusual for two modern aircraft uh, to crash uh, so catastrophically in such a short period of time. The 737 MAX only entering revenue service in 2017. So the, uh, it caused great alarm uh, and moreover, the indications increasingly are that the crashes are similar in origin. Now, the Lion Air crash is blamed, I must stress the full investigation into the Lion Air crash still has not been concluded. These investigations are long and complex affairs, but the indications are that a system called the maneuvering the Maneuver Characteristics Augmentation System uh, played a key role in the loss of the liner aircraft. Now, I have to explain, uh, the Boeing 737 MAX is the fourth generation iteration of the basic Boeing 737 design. That design is now over 50 years old. The MAX was developed as a response to Airbus's uh, new engine option upgrade of its A320 family, which saw that plane fitted with uh, um, various improvements, aerodynamic improvements, in addition to having new generation engines. And the MAX also involved various aerodynamic refinements, but the key uh, element is much more is more powerful bigger engines but because the 737 has a relatively short undercarriage uh, they had to make certain design modifications to accommodate these bigger more powerful engines the uh, the nose uh, wheel uh, landing gear was extended for example that is not relevant to aircraft performance once in flight. But the uh, engine uh, pylons and, uh, were changed, and of course the new engines have new nacelles. So the engines in the 737 MAX are further forward and higher up than on the previous 737 designs. Now this has aerodynamic consequences, and it also altered the thrust line, as they call it, the direction of thrust from the engines. Now, one consequence of this is that in certain circumstances, it creates a nose-up attitude of the aircraft. Um, and in certain circumstances, not common, this could bring with it the threat of a stall, where the aircraft a forward airspeed is insufficient to keep it flying and it drops. Uh, at low altitude, uh, that could be very fatal. Uh, at high altitude, it's very unpleasant for the passengers. The, uh, so, Boeing developed this maneuver characteristics augmentation system. And this was an automatic system called MCAS for short, that would induce nose down trim of the aircraft, to trim the attitude of the aircraft. Should certain 
high angles of attack uh, take place. In other words, angle of attack, street level, that's an angle of attack. And if angle of attack uh, is too great, the MCAS would push the nose down without informing the pilots. It would do so automatically. Incredibly, Boeing did not inform the pilots or any of the airlines that the MCAS system existed. There is no mention of the MCAS system in the Boeing flight manuals. So pilots were flying this plane not knowing there's an automatic system on board that would kick in under certain circumstances if it worked properly. Now their indications are that uh, angle of attack sensors on the Lion airplane malfunctioned. Uh, I, I believe there are two two sensors. One was correct, one incorrect. Uh, the MCAS system activated. The pilots had no idea what was happening. Because they did not know uh, the system existed, because the airline did not know the system existed, they'd never been trained in what to do if it malfunctioned. Um, I should add, when I said that incredibly Boeing didn't tell anyone about the system, even more incredibly, the United States Federal Aviation Administration, which, who Boeing did tell about the MCAS system, agreed with Boeing it was not necessary to inform pilots about this system on their aircraft. So I think the uh, Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA's uh, reputation, has taken a very big hit over this. It's an utterly incredible decision. The pilots were flying an aircraft with no knowledge of a system that would affect flight characteristics and would activate automatically under certain circumstances. So the indications are that in Lion Air, uh, the system activated because of uh, sensor failure. The pilots did not know what was happening. They did not know how to neutralize the system. There is a way to neutralize the system, but the pilots had not been told about it. Uh, and that the uh, key point is that with the MCAS, if the nose is pitched down and you pull back the control column, uh, the 77 still use the old control yoke, whereas other manufacturers have gone with uh, side stick controllers, uh, it does not disengage the MCAS. It doesn't overrule the MCAS uh, system. So the indications are that the pilots were battling the MCAS system, that the plane was doing this, and then finally it da dove into the sea at a steep angle. Now, what we uh, this happened shortly after takeoff with Lion Air. What, what we know is with the Ethiopian flight, the problem happened shortly after takeoff. There are indications that the plane was involved in this kind of erratic flight in the vertical domain. In both cases, the pilots, look, we know that the Lion Air pilots reported they're having control difficulties and asked to be able to return to the airport. It is reported but I cannot say confirmed, that the Ethiopian pilots reported c control difficulties, and we do know that they asked to return to the airport. We know from eyewitnesses uh, who saw the crash that the Lion Air plane went into the sea at a steep angle. We know from the Pauling crater on the ground that the uh, Ethiopian plane went into the ground at a steep angle. Uh, and it is reported, but again at this time not confirmed, that accident investigators have recovered a uh, part of the Ethiopian plane called the jack screw, which is what drives the mechanical device, which drives the uh, stabilizer, the tail plane at the end of the aircraft. And um, that is, of course, what pitches the nose up or down. And the report stated that it was found in an 
an unusual position uh, and perhaps also in a similar position to uh, the case in the Lion Air flight. Though I've got to be careful here, that may be an extrapolation from flight data recorder uh, material from the Lion Air flight and not from the retrieval of the physical part on the bottom of the sea. So at the moment, it's looking ominously like uh, MCAS again. Now, after the Lion Air flight, the US FAA issued an emergency uh, airworthiness directive to all 737 MAX operators that this problem existed and stating the uh, methods of, neutral, uh, of deactivating the MCAS in an emergency. The problem is this has to be trained for. You have to go through uh, simulators and simulate this emergency and practice it. When you're in a, uh, uh, an emergency situation, uh, you cannot rely on having read uh, uh, Worthiness Directive several weeks before. And there is no way that the airlines of the world could possibly rotate all the MAX pilots through the simulator, practice this emergency in the time, in, in the matter of uh, weeks, basically, the few months uh, since that airworthiness directive was issued. Uh, Boeing is working on a fix to the problem, but it's, happen it's coming along more slowly than originally hoped. And the, uh, of course, we had uh, the worldwide groundings of, of, the, of the aircraft, which started uh, the, it was a snowball effect. China ground, uh, grounded all maxes in its airspace, and then we had various airlines and countries beginning to ground uh, aircraft. You know, a string of Latin American airlines from Mexico through Brazil to Argentina grounded their maxes. Um, we had Singapore ban. Uh, maxes from the airspace so even planes flying in transit not flying to land at Singapore were not allowed uh, uh, to go uh, to operate the max on that route Indonesia grounded and then I think the it really took off when the uh, British Civil Aviation Administration uh, authority uh, banned the 737 max from British airspace because they are one of the most highly respected uh, aviation regulators in the world. And if, as an American, um, retired American investigator uh, said in an interview with American media, if the British ban it, then there is, this has to be taken very, very seriously. They obviously know something. And that triggered us. That really sent the, the ball rolling. Germany followed, Ireland followed, then the whole of EU airspace was closed, the 737 MAX, and uh, with country after country after country. Uh, all this was happening, by the way, uh, Boeing and the Federal Aviation Administration were still insisting that the plane was safe to fly. And finally, Canada, which had stuck alongside the United States, fell in line with every, nearly everyone else and grounded the plane, and then the US uh, did. There are indications, whether these reports are true or not, that President Trump intervened personally and said, ground the plane. If so, it's to his great credit, <laughs> and it's to the great discredit of the FAA that they held out for so long. Finally, they cited those new evidence from the Christ site, and the plane had to be grounded. At the present moment, uh, the FAA is saying that the planes will probably have to be grounded to May, until May. But the FAA's reputation has taken a terrible hit over this. And whether um, other countries are going to simply accept the FAA's assurances uh, on when, if they declare the MAX fl flyable again, 
uh, is a moot point. Well, not a moot point. Is, is is a point that we have to wait and see what's what's going to happen. But uh, that's the situation at the moment. How is this likely to affect Boeing? Well, it's very bad news. Uh, there's firstly in the short term the Boeing share price got hammered, but that's probably the least significant uh, aspect of the entire affair. The Confidence in Boeing has been shaken. I mean, this is one of the great names in aviation. It's one of the oldest aviation companies still in existence. And I think it's fair to say that Boeing's se senior management mishandled it. I think uh, there are now great concerns about uh, Boeing's approach. Uh, firstly, as I went back, this incredible decision to fit MCAS and not tell the pilots about it and not put it in the flight manual. Then their response to the accident, uh, insisting that uh, the aircraft was um, airworthy when more and more and more countries were and airlines were grounding it. Uh, and now they face uh, the fact that the um, latest iteration of the single aisle design is on the ground everywhere, it's not operating. Uh, at least one airline, a Norwegian, is threatening to sue them for loss of revenue. Uh, at least one other airline has probably stated it's considering cancelling its order for the MAX. Uh, the FAA has said um, to repeat uh, that it expects the fix to be in place by May, but there's no guarantee that that will be true. Even if the fix is in place, there's the question of loss of confidence in the airplane. Uh, there were uh, uh, airlines, uh, it is reported that airlines were getting calls from passengers asking for their flights to be shifted uh, onto aircraft other than the 737 MAX. Uh, there are reports of cabin crew not wanting to fly on the MAX. Uh, there may even have been cases of pilots being reluct reluctant to fly the MAX aircraft. And uh, um, I have not seen this myself, but I, I've seen reported that I in North America, uh, Boeing has a, a slogan, sometimes a joke, uh, a good natured joke, but then adopts a slogan if it's not a Boeing, I'm not going. And apparently, uh, Passengers have inverted that and have been telling uh, journalists and what have you uh, using the phrase, if it is a Boeing, I'm not going. So the PR effect has been disastrous. And ironically enough, Boeing's latest type, uh, the 777X, which is a wide body aircraft, probably Boeing's biggest passenger aircraft, uh, was unveiled to Boeing workers, uh, I think, yesterday. And the 777X is a massive upgrade to the 777. Well, I think the 777X is going to be subject to incredibly thorough uh, test and evaluation before it gets its airworthiness, and airlines are going to want to know that uh, they have been fully briefed on every aspect of the aircraft and its control system. Because there's another aspect I haven't mentioned. Of course, we have these tragedies with the 737 MAX. A, a few years ago, we had the um, serious problems with the 787 Dreamliner when it was introduced. 
thank heavens no lives were lost, but there were very serious feelings involving the, the lithium, uh, lithium batteries on that aircraft. Um, there were fires uh, in the, uh, well, what technically called, fire is, is technically inaccurate, but uh, thermal runaway events in the batteries which c could have triggered catastrophic fires if they happened, if the air uh, aircraft had been, say, halfway across the Pacific, it would probably have caused the loss of the aircraft and all people aboard, but thank heavens that never happened. So they've had serious problems with the introduction to service of the 787, and they've now got serious problems of introduction to service of the 737 MAX. It doesn't look good for, uh, doesn't look good for Boeing. It doesn't look good for Boeing at all. Um, so this is going to involve costs, uh, direct and indirect costs. and. Uh, where this uh, will end, uh, we cannot predict. It, in the worst possible case, the loss of confidence, the 737 MAX might be so great that the, the type may be killed. People may simply refuse to fly in it. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.